Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluto channel, back in the saddle, doing the paid reviews. <coughs> this is paid review 22 QB71. And this here is for Matt. Hi, Pontiff. <coughs> I've been watching you for the best part of the last seven years, and I really appreciate, um, and I'm very appreciative of the honest advice and guidance you've always given the community when it comes to making solid watch purchases. Every time you do a collection review or give any advice towards building a collection, it always seems to strike the right balance between watches that are going to appeal to the individual and remain solid in terms of long-term collectability and value retention. In terms of my background, I'm a single 37-year-old IT services professional who was born, raised and still living in Sydney since a young age and receiving my first digital Casio watch that I could wear proudly to school. Watches have always appealed to me. This has only grown into a passion even more over the years while watching sports such as golf and Formula One motor racing, where many watch brands are advertised and on the wrists of the superstars who walk those courses and drive around those tracks. Then came the day as a teenager when I received my first mechanical watch, a Seiko SKX007, which I still hold on to to this day, even though I am seldom rarely wearing, going to wear it. But the good thing is I have a 10 year old nephew who is looking to and also starting to grow um, and to grow an epiphany for watches. He is more than welcome to look into my watch box anytime, but the only one he's allowed to pull out and wear is the Seiko. During the last seven years or so, the following and following your advice have built a very solid collection. Let's have a look here. He's got a Rolex Explorer 1, 214270, that's the 39 mil discontinued model. He's got a Rolex Milgauss Z Blue, reference 116400GV, same as mine. He's got a Tudor Black Bay 58. He's got a Omega Speedmaster, first Omega in space. Uh, <clears throat> he goes on. The Rolexes and the Tudors were all purchased from prominent bricks and mortar dealers in Sydney and in excellent condition. The Explorer 1 I managed to get way below retail in 2017. The Milgauss was at a slight premium. The Tudor I managed to haggle on and get just on retail. Crazy that you still can't get the watch over the counter at Tudor ADs. The Speedy was my first AD experience where I negotiated a 15% discount. And as the first Omega in space only comes on the brown leather strap, the dealer also threw in the stainless steel bracelet as well. The This first Omega in space is now a discontinued piece. All in all, I've done pretty well and absolutely love the collection. Given my career, I already have a high reliance on tech to work out the date, time zones, etc. Having gone through the pain many years of having to adjust the day date function on my Seiko whenever the power reserve suddenly ran out, I've grown a much appreciation for simple wind, wear, and off you go watches. But my appreciation for F1, throwing in the need for a classic chronograph also to be included. So this will be my collection philosophy going forward forever without a doubt in terms of what i'd like to add going forward i feel the most obvious would be a daytona and a no date submarina i'm definitely a sports watch guy i've toured the ad's across sydney many times trying on watches from zenith iwc and jlc including dress pieces and nothing seems to appeal to me from these brands at least nothing that i feel would be mainstream in my collection in terms of wearing regularly and keeping long term in the collection. And nothing that is going to scratch the proverbial itch of ultimately wanting the Daytona and the sub. I know that if I am any slim chance of ever being able to get a Rolex at retail, I'd have to go on the journey and buy less, some less desired pieces. But given how you've built 
my current collection, I'm certainly not prepared to tear myself a new ASO in this manner either. On my short list right now, I've got a 116503 or a 116500LN. That's the Daytona references. One's a two tone and one's a steel. I'm going to haggle. I'm, I know I'm going to. Sorry, I know I'm going to have to shell out a lot of coin to have either piece from the grey market. But I certainly plan to haggle, given the market is coming off the boil. I don't know if you're going to have much luck. At least my money is more likely to be safe with this move as well. Albeit nothing is ever guaranteed. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on my collection and any other thoughts you might have on what I should consider adding with respect to my collection philosophy. When the community does its tour in Australia later this year, I'd love to catch up everyone else for a dinner and some drinks one evening in Sydney. And that's from Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt. What a beautiful story. What a great way to go. So I really do like this. What I really love with collectors is these real life collectors. There's too many Insta poses. You know, you see these guys, they've inherited money and they got huge collections. I like stories where, you know, we're Aussie battlers. Uh, okay, albeit upper middle class Aussie battler in your case, but hey man, that's the way to go. So I actually, I, I got to tell you, I love <coughs> the Seiko. Whatever you do, don't give the Seiko to that little nephew. Buy him another one. Just buy one. I reckon that's, don't be stingy. Buy him one. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, as for yourself there, I'd keep that. It's a good memory of when you were a kid. It's a great uh, memories to have there. So having a look at your collection, I really like it. I love the Explorer one. I love the Milgaus. I mean, I got to tell you, those two watches, Wind and Wear, amazing. I love the Tudor Black Bay 58. I had a couple burgundies. I've owned it a few times. I always felt it was a bit big. The 58 may be the perfect size Tudor. And of course, the Omega Speedmaster. And you have got the first Omega in space. Which I really do like. I really do like it. I think it is a very cool piece. So, definitely, I got to hand it to you there. You've got some incredibly cool pieces there. So, yeah, yeah, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. No problems whatsoever. I like it. Nice steel sports collection there. You've got your Tudor. I love Tudors. You got the Omega and you got two Rolex. Now, it would be my advice to you, my advice to you would be to go on on I don't think you're going to you know what I would do? I got to tell you, I reckon what I would do is get your watches into a nice watch roll or a watch box and take it into the Rolex ADs. That's correct. I'd go in there and say, hey, I'm just looking around. Hey, by the way, I want to show you my collection. And I am looking for, I want to add a Submarina. And I, I'd, um, I'd, I don't think you could be fussy and say you want to be a no date. Any sub, any Rolex sub would be fine. I've got to be honest with you. The Daytona, <coughs> that's going to be impossible to get, okay? So you, you might kind of, let's be realistic. I, I, I'd honestly see if you can, you know, why not waste, take it take in. If you're in Sydney, take in the collection. Make sure you don't get mugged on the way. And you never know your luck. You say, hey, I'm not a flipper. I love my watches. Here, here they are. And just see how it goes. It won't hurt. So... What do I think? I love the four-piece combo. So with the Seiko, I would definitely don't give it away. 
I'd buy another Seiko for your nephew. Well, just buy one. Go and buy one, man. They're not expensive. Don't be stingy. You're making good money. You're doing well. Um, what do I think myself there? Look, I, I, I like some of the other brands. I quite like Zenith. I think the Zenith El Primero is a great watch. That's the first automatic. First automatic. And it's got to tie into Rolex as well because when Rolex wanted an automatic chronograph, they went to Zenith. Um, I, I, I actually like some of the IWCs. Uh, and I like some of the JLCs, but okay, if you don't like them, that's that's completely okay. If I were you, I'd probably be adding an Explorer 2, because that doesn't sell for huge money over retail. I would get one of those. And, you know, I think the whole thing is with the watch collecting, I like the way it's a journey. It's not just instant you don't just instantly complete it you uh you basically um i gotta tell you you add to your collection slowly so i i tend to say is there anything wrong with wanting a daytona and a sub definitely not definitely not i'd possibly could be a great idea take your collection in you know wear one and a three watch roll or a four watch box, you say, I've got a hole missing, and go to Kennedy's, go to Hourglass, go to the boutiques, or well, the, the boutiques are either Kennedy's or Hourglass, go to, go to um, Hourglass as well, there's a couple of dealers there, go in there and see what you can say or do. Um, I think you just got to pay the piper. Pay the piper! Pay the piper! I would probably say, you know, I get it. You want to stick with Rolex. You know what? I understand. I understand completely. I would say, realistically, you're not going to get that from an AD. You're definitely not going to get the sub or the Daytona. It's just not going to work that way. Uh, that's the reality. The subs are pretty hard to get. I, and the Daytona is impossible. Let me just tell you that. I know people who have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and are not offered the Daytona in steel. So, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think Rolex is a great brand. I would definitely say add an Explorer 2. Maybe one of the new tuner GMTs would be another thing. I'd like to do thing doubling up. Um, so they've got a, quite a few. They've got the Pepsi, the Diet Pepsi Tudor, and also they've got that new Tuna GMT that's like a Vintage Explorer 2. The Yellow Hand. That's another great op. I, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely add more Rolex. I think Rolex is beautiful i love i love rolex but i think you've got an amazing collection i reckon it's time take your watches in to a dealer and just say hey i want to build a bit i really want to see if i can get a gotta be realistic explorer 2 submariner date submariner no date maybe a james cameron be be flexible uh and that's that's the way i would do it man uh, but I, I don't think you got much choke, but it never hurts to try. And it feels good that I've told people to go in there, bring your collection in, try and get the rapport going. Tell them you're not a flipper, not a flipper. You're a serious enthusiast. And, hey, give it a squirt. But uh, I got to say, nice collection. I love these collections. You just got to add. I would seriously, I think there's a... I, you don't have to buy brands you don't like. You want to stick to Rolex, man, you just got to pay the piper. I don't think you're going to get much luck with haggling. You never, you can try. You can try. Um, it can never hurt to ask. So, um, hey, 
Congratulations. I love the collection. I love these collections where they're not Insta poses. They're real people. So congratulations. Thank you for supporting your pontiff. Guys, like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Don't be afraid to get a paid review. Remember, I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I desperately need more paid reviews to survive. To survive. I do need more paid reviews. Okay, guys, I will see you in the next one. Remember, look down in the description. Get a paid review now. Thank you, Arch. Love it. Hi, guys. It's Archie Luxury. Guys, I want to talk to you about David SW. David SW, David SW. Guys, if you are in America, if you are looking for a Rolex watch of your dreams, in fact, if you're looking for a contemporary modern wristwatch, I strongly advise you to look at David SW. Guys, don't play the dealer games. Don't bring in chocolates or crispy creams for your dealer hoping to get a Rolex at retail. It's futile. Please, guys, save your dignity. Keep some pride. Go to David SW. I would highly recommend David SW, David SW. If you're in America and you're looking for a watch, go to David SW, David SW, David SW. Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and today guys, I'm very proud to introduce a new sponsor of the Archie Luxury and the Paul Pluto channels. Who am I talking about? Watchshopping.com, watchshopping.com, watchshopping.com. Check them out, guys. Jump online, check out watchshopping.com. These guys here have been in business since 2017. Worldwide shipping and distribution. Over 10,000 wristwatches in inventory. Stock in hand and 90 plus different brands, new and pre-owned. Now, the good thing about watchshopping.com, trusted by over 4,000 reviews on Chrono24 and Trustpilot. Your one-stop shop to buy any watch your heart desires. Please, guys, check out watchshopping.com, watchshopping.com, watchshopping.com. I'm Archie Luxury, and check out watchshopping.com. Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the YouTube sensation, the Paul Pluto channel. Guys, I need you to help me out, guys. I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I need you to request a paid review. 50 US dollars, look down in the description. 50 US dollars, re I will review your collection. I'll tell you what I think of it, and I'll give you some pointers. The other thing is, guys, you can sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay a couple bucks a month, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you want. And it keeps me going on YouTube because, guys, I'm in a niche. Nobody can make money out of the views I get. The views are crap because it's a small, specialized area. And I don't talk about garbage for the sake of views. Guys, sponsor me on Patreon. Look down below and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.